And Ms. Hordesky and Mr. Hordesky okay. have Amber when okay. she okay. Okay. Amber Cross. That was my confusion. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, up here, please. Raise your right hand and be sworn and didn't have a seat. You do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this action should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I help you God. Please state and spell your name for the record of your last name. Last name? Hordesky, Allison Hordesky, H-O-R-O-D-E-S-K-Y. Ms. Fine. This indulgence is just one silly minute. name please for the record Allison Hordesky and what is your address Mrs. Hordesky 11405 via Spiga Drive Las Vegas 89138 and how long have you uh, well how are you related to Mr. Hordesky is my brother-in-law my husband's brother and um, from what date when was Hayden born if you can tell us please April 10th 2005 was it, um, what was your relationship with Hayden, Christopher, Amber, let's say with Hayden, with the family unit? At the, at the time of that, since how long have you been married to Greg? Let's do that. Uh, we just had our sixth year. Our sixth? Yeah. Okay. And how old is Hayden? Hayden's seven. And how long were you going with Greg before so that I know that you knew them all? Oh, yeah. Um, two and a half years before our marriage. So prior to. So what was your relationship with Christopher when um, Hayden was born? We had a fine brother sister-in-law relationship. I Did you have a relationship with Amber and and uh, Hayden? Before Hayden was born, I wouldn't say no. Much After before. Hayden was born? We knew each other. I wouldn't say it was a family relationship, but knew each other. Could you tell the court how you came to be the custodian of, uh, Christ of Hayden in recent months? Um, what month was it? February. It was February 23rd, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And How did that come to be, if you recall? It, wait, like it was court ordered? Or I Do you know why? Um, not really. I mean, okay. Well, I mean, I know that he was taken from his fam his family so that they could maybe figure some of their stuff out. Okay. So you don't know, so we're going to we're gonna go on from there. All you know is, which is very good, that the court granted you and your husband temporary custody of Hayden. Is that correct? Yes, I do know that. Okay. So... You, how did you get Hayden? Um, Hayden was going to open arms for visitation with both of his parents. You need to talk loud. Okay. Because I can hear you, but I'm, I want Judge Hardcastle to be able to hear you. Hayden was going to open arms for visitation with both of his fam uh, parents. And so... Well, not um, at that point, was he? Um, not at that point, no. He was going to visitation with his father. And it was open a, arms. Yeah, it was a night that he had visitation with his father. So we met them at open arms, and we had the handoff of Hayden at open arms. With was that court ordered as well? That was court ordered. Okay. So tell me what happened. What was Hayden like when you saw him, and what was he delivered with? And He was very happy. He was. He knew what kind of, I think, what was going on, that he was going to be coming home with Greg and I. And we had a fine conversation with Earl. I gave them a card with our phone number, and there were tears. And um, Hayden came to us with what he was wearing. And um, and that was it. He was a happy boy, sang on the way home. You know, um, I didn't see a lot of stress in him, given the situation, I would say. Was it Greg? And, was Greg with you and Chris, or just Greg? Just Greg and I, and uh, that was it. Okay, so tell me some of the, were there any op any obstacles when you first got him home? Um, maybe, not right away, it was fine. It was kind of getting into a routine. We um, It was court ordered that we got him into school. So the next day we enrolled him. I took him to the doctor, got his shot records, and then he was enrolled. What did in you school. learn at the doctor? That he had. Well, I called to get his shot records, and they said you need to bring him in. He has not been in since his five-year checkup, and he was turning seven. So I, I made an appointment right then for half an hour later, and I drove him down. Um, so that was what we learned at the. And I got his shot records then. And was he current on his shots? Uh, he was current on his shots. He did have asthma, um, and so they gave me prescriptions and his nebulizer and all that kind of stuff that I didn't have. 
How long it had been since he'd been to the doctor, if you were not? It was his five-year checkup, so it was well over a year, according to what they saw. Was he having trouble breathing when you got him? No, he was fine and healthy. And is he still fine and healthy? Yes, very. Um, can you tell me his conduct and demeanor while he was with, while he's been with you? Yeah, he's, um, when he came to us, he kind of lacked boundaries and lacked structure, which we have a lot of at our house, so that's something that we... Do you have children at your home? Two. And how old are they? I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And you also, do you work? Um, I have a part-time job, severely part-time, so... But you used to work before you had children doing I was, what? I was a teacher for nine years in the school district, taught first grade and third grade, and um, I now stay at home with my kids. So you, you have boundaries at your home. What kind of boundaries did you have that Hayden wasn't able to follow or wasn't able to deal with at the beginning? Um, just following directions, having to tell him things more than once, um, just kind of appropriate contact with my daughter. And um, it's kind of the same things that they saw at school. So we worked, we set up a behavioral system with the school um, that we work on at home also. And so, I, I mean, we've seen a lot of improvements in them. So. He, he had visitation with his mother where, when he first came to you? Um, open arms. So how were those visits, if you remember? When he would go, how would he be when he would go? How would he be when he would come home? He was fine going, and he was sad. He was sad afterwards the first couple of times. Um, it was hard. You know, he, he loves his mom. Misses, you know, it was hard. Did he have any um, behavioral issues when he came home after open arms? Um, no, just crying, and he had a picture of her, that kind of stuff, and we worked, you know, we worked through it, we comforted him, we parented him, and we understood, you know. What was his, re what was his relationship with Chris while he was in your home? Well, since he's been in my home, it's been great, I, so it, he's, it, it's been really good. Visitation's been supervised by you and Gregory, though, right? Right. Okay. Um, during his, the visitations at Open Arms subsequently ended, isn't that correct? Yes. And when they ended, what was the new order? Um, that we would have visitation uh, at our home and that... Um, for Chris, for Chris. For Amber. And then she had visitation with her parents as the supervisor over the weekend and they set up a schedule. So it was Friday to Sunday at noon and then Saturday and then they dropped him off at school on Monday. So that he one could week get it in. was Friday to Sunday, and one week it was it's, Friday. To yeah, so that he could get in his karate and stuff, and swimming. He did swimming with us. So okay, let's go over the schedule slowly. Okay. Because Sorry. Judge Hardcastle doesn't know the order that was put in place. Oh. Friday to Sunday in week one. So Friday they picked him up at school, and then we picked him up Sunday at noon, which generally took place at their church. We'd meet them at church. And week two would, it would be. Would be Saturday at noon. They would pick him up. Generally, we do swimming lessons, so they'd be at our gym, and then they'd drop him off to school on Monday morning. When he came home, Hayden, um, when he would come home from his visitations with his mom, was there any difference then in his behavior or his attitude? It took um, it took a while to get back. It's a while. A day, I would say. I would say by Tuesday night, he was back into the routine. You know, he's. At our house, he's one of three, so it's a little different. You know, he's, it did take him a little bit of time to adjust to our rules and expectations at our home. You can't tell me what he said, but is there anything that, um, that he did that was specific to uh, acting that, that was just so unusual to you? But, but I can't tell you what he said. No, you can't tell us what he said. It would be hearsay. Um, there were several things. <laughs> Anything he did, any behaviors? Um, with my daughter. He acted out with my daughter. In what way? He um, tried nursing from her at one point. Com he, it, it was inappropriate. It, that was what we were what working on. What did you say to him? This is hearsay. I mean. What's it? I just parented him and told him. Well, that just, was I mean. Inappropriate. It's not hearsay. Did you see it? No, it was going on during nap time. My daughter came down and told me, and he okay, It is her say the objection sustained. The, the testimony is stricken. Okay, thank you. Um, tell me about his schoolwork. Well, um, so when we enrolled him, we gave him about a month, and the teacher did some assessments and um, just to check on his progress because he got enrolled during the time of um, report cards were coming out. He didn't get a report card, so I just asked for progress 
so I could see how he's doing because he wasn't there long enough to get a report card. And so after the first month, she gave she called me in and um, she the, teacher? the teacher, Mrs. Hauser, and showed me all these assessments that he was below grade level and gave me his progress report. And I said, well, and she was concerned that he was not up to what first grade level. He was not up to the standards. And so, you know, I said, well, we're working with them and everything we're doing at home. And she knows how hard we're working with them. And um, then when the second progress report came back and it was still D's and F's, um, she feels that he needs to repeat first grade. And that's been her recommendation as far as, she says it's behavioral and his academics. It's across the board. His behavioral impedes his academics and vice versa. Do you know what his grades were at Vanderburg? Um, I have his, he wasn't there long enough also to get a report, but from what I have seen, he started the year below grade level. Um, it had him reading at a point three, which would be kindergarten, third month of school, which would be below grade level at first grade level. Exhibit one. Have you ever seen those records before? Yes. Can you tell me uh, when you received, when you saw these? Oh, those I have. Um, this is what I've seen. That looked like kindergarten. I had not seen that. Oh, so you haven't seen these? If you, the ones you were kept going. Just go through and see if there's anything there you've seen. Or how you've seen it. Okay. No, I have not seen his release and transfer. This is what I have seen, his first grade report, and this is a letter from the teacher that I've seen that. That's from Ms. Hauser? No, this is from his first grade teacher at, at Vanderburg. Vanderburg. Okay. And how did you see that? Um, it was in his records at Givens. Okay. Of course, indulgence. Um, when, when, uh, were you having difficulties during telephone conversations when uh, Ms. Johnson would call to speak with her son? We were. It was difficult. Can you tell us, the court, did the court grant permission for Ms. Johnson to speak with yeah. Hayden? Yes. And what would happen when Hayden, when Ms. Johnson would call? What would Hayden do? Well, he's hard to get on the phone as it is, so he would... Why is that? He's, seven. He's, a, he's a kid. He just was, you know, if he's in the middle of playing and I'd say, hey, mom's on the phone, or hey, mom called, let's call mom back. He didn't always want to. And we encouraged it. We never said no. We never didn't allow her to call. Um, but after some some time, he um, started hiding from us, and just his behavior was different. And you could tell, you know, he would be in his room by himself or on the couch. We're all around. We're in a fam you know, it's our house. But you could just tell that he he was stressed. I would say, and he would say. Yeah, and I would say he can't say what he would say. No, oh well, he didn't always want to call her back. So did there come a time when he she, he would when he did speak to her? What would happen? Um, well, I could just tell that he was upset. It was uncomfortable. Would he hide from you when he was yeah. on the phone? Mm -hmm. And why? How would he do that? He would go into the bathroom and try to close the door, which. I don't feel is appropriate. He would try to go into his, his bedroom and hide, or he'd try to go out back by himself. And I would just say, Hayden, we'd let it go, but Hayden, when you're on the phone, you need to just stay in here. Just relax. Is everything okay? And then, I can't say what he'd say, but he did not feel comfortable sometimes. So, what was his behavior like after the conversations were over? Um, sometimes he was quiet. Sometimes he was ready for bed. Um, you know, Did the conversations ever get to the point where you um, were concerned about Hayden's well-being? Mm -hmm. And so, is that a yes? Yes, that's a yes. What would tell me? Well, you've got to tell me what I can't. Okay. You've got to tell me what would happen that caused you to be concerned. Well, Hayden would say things like that. His mom. He would repeat what his mom had said. You know that he was sick and the cops were coming over for a well check. I didn't feel that that was appropriate things to say to a seven-year-old. So 
did there come a time when you, how do I do this, where you thought to protect Hayden there was something you could do? Yes. And what was that? I felt the need to record phone calls. And did you tell Amber that she was being recorded? Yes, and huh? she stated back to us that she had been recording the whole time also. And she hadn't told you that? Never. So you recorded telephone calls. Did you provide any to the court for today? Yes, I did. And Your Honor, Exhibit 4 is a disc that um, I would like to play, if I could, to see if it's in, this, it's in everyone's exhibit book and it's in yours as well. And if it's March or May 10th. You what? If it's May 10th, she did not acknowledge recording to myself. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your. Um, as per my knowledge, um, that particular call, she did not properly authorize me that she was recording it. She stated it prior to the phone call coming through and being answered by myself. And that was noticed and discussed with Paglini when I was in his office. Uh, they say they have a transcript. Is it a transcript or a recording? Recording, Judge. Um, I can assure and your objection you is what? That she, she, she failed to uh, state that she was recording that particular phone call and based on the Although grounds. Although she knew that they were always recorded. Ma'am, don't. Okay, no, no, sorry. No. No, as all your recordings state. No, no, just a minute. You talk to me, not her. As each recording she stated, she had to state to me that she was recording. And this particular recording, she did not state that. Why did she have to tell you she was recording? She, to make it legal or to be provided in court. So, I mean, there is the issue of unilateral recording of conversations. Well, may I? I ask all mine be admitted then. She did, did well, that request is denied right now. Lunch, at the lunch break, Judge, I would be happy to listen because I, I heard them and I'm almost positive she did make that um, representation at the beginning of each, at each conversation. This conversation is being taped and the response okay, was. Okay, I mean, why don't you listen to it and if, not, not right now, but it the time at lunch and if there was consent or uh, it's more than information there has to be consent I suppose she has to say oh, I understand or okay or right so can, should we do that at the lunch hour and then I can recall Allison um, and I can call Mr. Hordesky now well uh, other than that telephone conversation and the admission of that I mean do you intend to ask her anything as a result of that conversation or you just want to play it oh I, I would I um can you so, I mean, here, here's my concern is, is recording the phone calls, if the calls are inappropriate, I mean, it's some minor something. I, again, I... I minor. Okay. I mean, that's my whole point is, is that we're getting, I don't want to hold up the trial be, over this, but why don't you, I mean, the, the call, I assume, would speak for itself, Miss Fine, and once I heard it, I would hear what I was going to hear? Yes, you are. Okay. Then, then I don't, if... Is that all the questions that you have? Of I have a few more, if I could. Okay, why don't you go ahead and finish your examination of her. I'll reserve the admissibility of that until after you listen to it and you can address the issue of consent. Go ahead. Has Amber had any contact with you specifically? Yes. That's what I'd like you to tell the court about now, if you would. Um, well, during the phone conversations. Um, that she had with you. That she had with me at one point. Um, when did this conversation take place? I can look at my phone. Why don't you just tell me approximately how long ago? Um, before Mother's Day. Um, and you were on the phone with her? Yeah, it was when she had called. Okay, tell me about that conversation. Um, she had contacted the school regarding Hayden's grades, and so I said to the teacher, why don't we just set up a conference, because she had been telling Hayden that I was intentionally holding him back, which isn't the truth. So I said, why don't we just have a conference, and they can see what the paperwork shows. They can see how he's doing in school. Who's they? Um, his parents, Chris and Amber. Right. And so, you know, um, I said to Amber, I said, you know, we're, I'm going to be having a conference with the teacher. I'd like to invite you to the conference. And um, and I really can't tell you how she was so mad at me. It just you can say what she Amber snowballed. Said. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, her care. let her go ahead. Yeah. It just she just kind of snowballed her emotions. Um, the things that we do at our house are BS, and um, that we don't allow Hayden to call her. And I was very calm and saying, Amber, you need to understand that we do let Hayden call. You know, she's just she was very very angry at me, and all I was trying to do was 
kind of like co-parent and say, hey, let's look at his grades together. I was trying to open it up because the teacher had said how concerned she was. Okay, I'm not worried about what the teacher okay. said and that was stricken, but basically you had a conversation with her and she, and she became very angry. Very, and very angry. And, yeah. And so at the end of her going off on me, I said, so Amber, will you not be attending this conference? And then I gave the phone over to Hayden and her anger just continued as she spoke to Hayden. And I felt that if I'm his guardian, I can't allow this kind of talk to go on in my house. And that's why we kind of let, that's kind of why we were recording. Was Okay, all right. Anything else, Ms. Fine? Did you have any other conversations with Amber or any other any other um, parenting issues with Amber during this period of time? Um, due to the concern of school, we did send um, home a workbook that the teacher had given us, never to be seen again. Um, so we had conversations about those kind of things. It what just, was the response be? Um, they couldn't find the workbook. The workbook was missing. Um, there's what church? A, we'll, go, we'll deal with that later. That's not important. Um, Hayden is in a choir. Yes. And do you know the name of the church or the, where he's? I don't. New Beginnings, I believe. And um, he's also in karate. Yes, with. Yeah. With you or with? With his mom. And what about swimming? Swimming is with us. Okay. And we have him in golf, okay. at school. And did I ask you this? And if I did, I apologize. The relationship between Chris and Hayden now. Can you describe that relationship? You did ask that, Ms. Fine. We are repeating testimony. Okay, I just couldn't remember. I'm, I was all prepared. And um, have you been receiving child support? Yes, we have. And have, who have you been receiving it from? Um, Christopher, um, 500 a month, and each month. And then um, Amber's two gave 100 a month. March, she didn't pay. April, she paid twice. And then this last month, her parents wrote us a check. So I'm not sure, saying, we're not sure if Amber paid you. This was last Monday. She had. Oh, she's paid. current, right? Is, if a check from her parents is child support. Yes, it is. If you receive money on her behalf, it is. Mm -hmm. Then we so received. I just wanted to make yeah. sure that. Everybody's you... current in child support. Let's go. Anything else? Nope. All right. Do you have any questions you would like to ask? Yes, Allison, during the phone call, um, that you referenced uh, discussing stuff with school and it getting upsetting for me. Um, did we discuss, um, did you get upset in the fact that you felt I did not have a privilege to know the child's progress? Absolutely not. Without you present? Absolutely not. You, was it you that communicated my son was having problems with school or do you know who communicated that to me? No. The teacher? I have no idea. Well, you record the conversations, correct? I don't record conversations with you. I record conversations between your son and yourself. Well, you're on the phone because you end the calls. You, you, do you think that being on another line and knowing when to end a call if you are not hearing it is Hayden brings not me the phone and I end the call. Do you require Hayden to do every call on speakerphone around everyone? Absolutely not. He's on the phone in his room or on the couch. Oh, jeez. Did you remember in that call where you said that Hayden does not want to call me, um, that you also said that he cries for me every night and misses his mommy? I did not say that. Did you ever leave Hayden after school alone? with his father for golf practice? No, he was never alone with his father. Did you tell Hayden that he's not allowed to discuss um, his feelings or it's against your, your rules? Absolutely not. Did you tell him, um, were you, did you walk in on a conversation Chris and Greg had saying they were gonna hit, give him a lie detector test? No. Was it you who stumbled pro uh, across the Munchausen by proxy and told Chris and the rest of the family that, that that's what I have? Absolutely not. The judge said that. <laughs> I've never, I didn't even know what it was. These are all reported in Pag uh, Paglini's report by you, so. That, that comment stricken. That's not a question. Um, I, I don't know how to reference her saying that Hayden hadn't been in for, um, 
a five-year checkup when he's six years old and has since then turned seven, but we were um, requested to provide the court um, copies of a doctor visit that Hayden had, which impeded a supervised visit at Open Arms, and that was provided in court in December to the judge, and Fran accepted it, and he also she's a teacher would not have been accepted into school there's a way that those records can be admitted very easy way a couple of different ways um, we brought it up then that this is the hearing today obviously it's different okay this is the evidentiary hearing this is a formal hearing did you um, you had mentioned not uh, the the child support thing and that it was delayed, but was it delayed because you stated that you would do nothing per court on March 12th until there was an order filed late April? I, I don't understand the question. I'm so sorry. I'm not either. Okay, late. Ms. Johnson, I can tell you this. Both parties are current in their child support. I don't care who paid it. I don't, frankly, I'm not really concerned about when they paid it. I. I think both parties have paid what the court ordered to. I'm satisfied with that. I'm not construing that for or against anybody. On 312, um, did you openly acknowledge in court that you had put Hayden in counseling with Ponzo without the request of the mother? It was court order that I did what I felt appropriate, and I put him in with Nick Ponzo because it was what I felt appropriate. I was the guardian at that time primary physical but not legal as Chris and I will still you're, you're arguing with her now she admits that she did that unilaterally judge if I could direct your attention and I no, no, it's fine it, unless it's an objection I'm more interested in not we you can do it on recross okay. or on redirect if you want what would you um, say your relationship has been with me um, would you rate it as a good relationship, bearable or unbearable? It's, I would, I don't really know. We don't have a relationship, so. Have I been in your home um, for holidays or spent holidays with you and the family? Yes, you have. On more than one occasion? I think you've been to my home once. Okay, you need to answer yourself. Don't look at. Yeah, I think yeah. once, once, twice. Is, is that it? Okay, she, she had, you have no other questions? Okay, Ms. Fine, do you have any other questions? I have one, I have one question. Um, I have here, have you ever seen this document? Yes. Can you tell me what it is? It's the court ordered from what's the date? It's at the top. Uh, April 18th is of, when it was filed. Of what year? 2012. And what is the date of the hearing? Um, March 12th. And if you look at the last page of this order, would you read it, please, into the record? It is further ordered that Hayden's sexual abuse counseling shall be terminated. Nicholas Ponzo shall continue with reunification. Counsel may confer and submit the name of another qualified individual to the court to engage in reunification therapy with Hayden. Does it say May? Dated this 16th no. date. Does it say that... That does the in the court or never mind. No, it says it's fine. I can read the order. You're right. The court will take judicial notice of the order. Uh, it'll be filed as uh, plaintiff's exhibit one. Is that fair? Six. What is it? Plaintiff's exhibit six. Plaintiff exhibit six. All right, it's admitted. All right, Miss Fine. Anything else? Uh, not not at this time. Just the the CD. Okay. Well. Oh yeah, I do. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. All right. Yes, fine. Ms. Hordesky, is it uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Hordesky, Chris and Amber have never been in a relationship since Hayden, since Hayden was born. Is that correct? I would say no. And um, on holidays, do you travel um, as a family together? Um, no. Uh, do, do, on the holidays, do you usually spend them together? Yes. The uh, Hordesky family. Yes. Is it unusual to you that Miss um, Horde Miss Johnson would also uh, be at your home on on Chris's holiday? It was how we would get to see Hayden. Tell me about that. So if we went, she would show. She would be at the house, or 
it was kind of the only way that Chris could get to see Hayden was Amber had to be there. So did he ever get to wake up on Christmas morning with his son? Under my knowledge, no. Did he ever get to get, wake up on Easter morning and have an Easter egg hunt? To my knowledge, no. Did he ever get one entire day of a holiday? Not that I, I can say no. Thank you. I have, now I have nothing further. All right. You may step down. Thank you. Uh, call your next witness. Uh, Mr. Hordesky. Judge, because she's done testifying, she wants to know if she can have a seat in the courtroom. A seat in the court room anyway. Nobody's excluded witnesses or participants. She can sit down. Well, I would like to exclude witnesses, Judge. I mean... Well, that's a little late. Well, I understand that, but there haven't been any in the courtroom. <laughs> that I know of. Are you here to... For this case? No, they're. Huh? And and Are you going to call them to testify? Uh, I'm going to. Yeah, we'll, we'll exclude witnesses. Are, are there any other people that you're going to call? No, That's why I'm sitting back there. That, okay. Witnesses are excluded. Raise your right hand. Please, the clerk. You do summons where the testimony you're about to give in this action should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you with that. Yes. Please state and spell your last name for those records, please. My name is Christopher Hordesky, H-O-R-O-D-E-S-K-Y. Have a seat, Mr. Hordesky. Mr. Hordesky, can you uh, give us your address, please? My address is 200 West Sahara, Unit 3004. And you are the plaintiff in this action, is that correct? Correct. In 2005, your son was born. Is that correct? correct. Tell me why you had felt the need to file an action in this case. And does, just give me a little leeway, Judge, in 2006 with respect to Hayden. Uh, my idea of getting an attorney originally was due to the fact Not that... an attorney. Why did you file an action? Because I wanted what I was entitled to as a father. You wanted to be able to see your son? My... Were you able to see your son before you filed an action? I was given opportunity to see my son under what she allowed. Okay. Were you ever allowed to have him by yourself? Uh, not until we got an order, a uh, parenting plan together. And there was a parenting plan that was entered into in 2007, is that correct? Oh, that sounds right. And it was, uh, rather, it was through Charlotte Kiffer? Correct. Why did you enter into such a lengthy and extensive parenting plan? I just time? wanted to keep peace. I, I just looked at it if, if uh, you know, in the beginning, of, it was supposed to be redone after he was five years of age. I figured, you know, in the beginning of the year, you know, I just want to keep peace. I just want to see my son. So at, when he was five years old, were you able to remediate? We tried to. How did you try? I uh, explained to her that we needed to do it, and then I was coming to your office. And was it at that time? But in two th that was in 2011, is that correct? I also came to your office once before that. In 2009, what happened that caused a concern? Amber uh, accused me of sexually abusing my son. Was that, and, and what occurred? Was that issue taken to CPS? Uh, I was given a call. I received a call from CPS and received a call from Henderson Police to go in there for an interview. And did you do everything that was asked of you? Absolutely. And did you, uh, were those charges ever filed? No. Um, do... Do we have, have you had an opportunity, well, let me show you, it's marked as Exhibit 2, and, and I would ask the court to, it's um, obtained through subpoena, this is Tika Minutes. Let me just have the whole notebook if I have the key. Let me ask you if you've ever seen these documents. Look, look through them, it's Exhibit 2, and tell me if you've seen them. to take judicial notice that they there's a subpoena due to with the affidavit from the Henderson police mm -hmm. with respect to the police report that and everything that was determined. I would like to ask, um, I would ask that they be admitted based on that, Judge. And then, what's your object? Do you have any objection, ma'am? 
I wasn't served with this affidavit. Here's my concern. Clear, clear hearsay violation and probably a due process violation to allow those documents in if what you're offering them for is to show whether or not the abuse. No, no, Judge, I'm not. Did or did not occur. Then why are they admitted? Only to show them. Well, okay, I guess. But to show the medical the medical record, which is page seven of the documents. I guess. Same problem with the medical record. Uh, I mean, these aren't even records that were directed to the custodian of records of the hospital. And there's a there's a summary procedure that can be instituted to get those records clear hearsay. Uh, my, my big concern is this case is very easy to fall into that trap where you just throw a bunch of records at the court. The, the fundamental issue is whether or not he abused uh, this child. I assume, although I haven't heard it, that he's going to say he did not. No, no, no. Not, well, he's not going to say that? Yeah, of course he is. Okay. Then the issue becomes whether or not there is evidence that he did. Okay. And the reality, Ms. Fine, I want to make this very clear, is, is that the findings of the juvenile court are not binding absent very unique circumstances. For instance, if he was convicted of a crime, that can be used against him. But civil proceedings uh, of some lesser degree are not, in my opinion. The records are not. Uh, I mean, it really becomes incumbent upon someone to prove with evidence, not just investigations and police reports and what have you, that this either did or did not occur, and I intend to have the parties focus very clearly on that. And I and I'm, you know, I I assume that if he denies it, uh, that then she has some responsibility to produce evidence. So I'm going to hold her to the same burden that I hold your client, and that is, I'm not going to let parties just start throwing a bunch of police reports and complaints and speculations and stuff that don't rise to the level of evidence. And so I don't intend, Ms. Fine, to admit that. Thank you, Judge. Not, That's not as a, it's, it's a wholesale. You're absolutely right. Well, of course you're right. That was, um, I'm right more than just because I'm the judge. I also happen to be right because I'm right. You're always right. I know that. Your Honor, may I ask a quick question? I yes. wasn't involved in the CPS case. Um, I was left out of it and advised to just take him to appointments. So I personally just want to let you know, I, I, I was not allowed to do anything in the case or investigate or do anything but comply with CPS, which I did. Ma'am, I understand that. That also has no relevance to me. You have made, I understand from your situation that you've made allegations that he sexually abused his child. And not with simply opinions and speculations and what have you. You have to prove that if that's the basis for your action. If you cannot prove it, then there's a strong argument, is there not, that maybe you are alienating. I don't know. That's that's what this case comes down to, isn't it? That's where you that's where you folks really are. So you have to, you know, I've I've got to decide. I mean, if, if you. If you prove it, just to be real honest with you, I'm not going to give the child to someone who sexually abuses a child, am I? Conversely, I'm not going to allow steadfast, unproven allegations to be a basis for you continuing to interfere with his relationship. So it really comes down to that, doesn't it? The, the answer is yes or no. Yes. All right, good. All right, Ms. Fine, proceed. During a relationship, with Hayden when he was a little boy and you were finally getting some visitation. Were you able to travel with Hayden? No. Were you able to travel with Hayden if Amber went with you? Yes. And did you travel with Hayden with, with when Amber came with you? Yes. How often? Maybe once or twice a year. And where would you go? We went to my parents' home in California. Was it platonic or was there a sexual relationship? There was no sexual relationship. Um, We have a convention going on back there. That happens to be uh, Judge Denton's daughter and also Judge Tootin's Lockler. 
I was hoping your daughter would be here. Huh? I was hoping your daughter would Not be here. Not me. She'd there be in class. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you filed this motion in um, 2011. Is that correct? Yes. And when you came to... Uh, when you wanted to remediate this action, was it before any any uh, any case had been filed by? Yes. In 2009, was there something going on in your life that might have been the impetus? What was, what was different in your life? Did you have a girlfriend from 2005 to 2009? I had a girlfriend 2009 that worked with Amber at Republic Services. And at that time, she had just got hired there. Is that when the charges were filed? The correct. Okay, and in 2011. Did you have another girlfriend? Yes, I did. Were those the only two girlfriends you've had since Hayden's been alive that Amber would have known about? What I would call serious relationships. Are you still in either one of those relationships? I'm, in, I'm still with uh, my current one that was uh, that I was with during these allegations that, that are Laura. recent. Laura. She lives in California, is that correct? Correct. Can you tell us the day that these charges allegedly were made, um, or the charges were made, what you and Hayden and Laura were doing that day? Uh, Friday morning, I picked Hayden up from his mother. I went back to my place, and Hayden and I picked Laura up. We went to breakfast. Uh, we stopped by our, my store, um, and then we Which went. What? Like uh, a, we own a convenience store. Convenience store? Yes. Like a Circle K or 7-Eleven, but with a different name? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and we stopped by there, and then afterwards, we went to the Mercedes dealership. Laura was in town to purchase a car. And while she was, we dropped her off the dealership, Hayden and I went to Toys R Us. And then you went back and? We went back uh, to the house for five minutes, ten minutes, and then Laura called and said she was ready. So we got in the car and went to the dealership to see her new purchase. And then what happened? I mean, then what did you do? After the, we got done with Mercedes, um, we went, dropped my car off. The three of us went to Walmart to pick up a toy that Hayden wanted. And we went and picked up some things that Laura needed for her travels home. And then Hayden fell asleep in the car on the ride back to the, my house in Green Valley. Did you carry him into the house? Yes. Was Laura still with you? Yes. Did Laura spend the night? No. Did um, she leave to go back to California? She left about 20 minutes prior. And Before Hayden was even awake, he was still asleep when she left. So he woke up. He woke up. I put him in the car. We then drove to Amber's house so that I could drop him off. And what date was that, if you recall? June 10th. It was a Friday. June 10th of 2011? Correct. And you didn't see him from that day until when? I went, well, up until we started our visitations at Open Arms. Do you remember when that was? I know uh, it was after, I want to say it was after I got exonerated from court for, I don't know exactly, it was, it was several, like a few months, six months, six months after. Uh, was visitation ordered at the very first hearing? After January 10th, after December 2nd, 2011? That sounds correct. And did, was, did Earl, was Earl Johnson, uh, Amber's dad, did he supervise that one? He sat in, and Judge Toot asked him to use his relationship with Hayden to kind of help us start over again. And so you met at where? Open Arms. Oh, we met once at McDonald's. What happened at McDonald's? At McDonald's, um, Hayden came in. He How long had it been since you've seen him? Approximately, what did you say the date was that we started? Uh, the first hearing was December 2nd, 2011. Six months, approximately. Okay, and so? First visit was at McDonald's. And was he responsive to you? Was he standoffish? What was he? First, he was nervous, as I was. And uh, once we ordered food, he came in and sat down and showed me his toys. Then he went and played. Um, you could tell that he was uncomfortable. He didn't know how to act. It's fine. I, I'm becoming increasingly concerned, first of all, and I, and I want to explain as very clearly as I can. I hope we can get there. We've been over the, the situation with Mr. Ponzo. The, the, the decree was entered 
on January the 12th, 2007, there was a parenting plan. On November 7th, 2011, he files his motion, very specific allegations. Number one, the child's age. He's briefly mentioned that there was a, 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 at least some type of an agreement or understanding that he had to be remedi remediated when the child was five years old and it's too restrictive. The second thing he argues is that there is alienation by the mother, and he's very specific about his allegations. The first is is that there were inappropriate made comments by the father's girlfriend, demands to accompany them on over out-of-state trips, uh, non-compliance with the right of first refusal, <coughs> and allegations of unfounded allegations of sexual abuse, but fundamentally all rising to the level of alienation. In the examination, it appears that what we have gone from is the fact that after the motion was filed, there was uh, an order to Dr. Ponzo, and we're starting to get, starting to revisit all of that history coming forward. The issue here is fundamentally one of whether or not the motion, uh, whether or not the allegations in the motion are true or false. I'm not going to allow, or nor do I think it's appropriate, for instance, just to simply say, well, somebody filed a motion, and then after the motion filed, they got cause to support the motion. Right. Either you have it at the time, right. and, and here's what my concern is, Ms. Fine. I'm, I'm really anxious to to give her the opportunity. We've now spent two and a half hours into this, or, well, more than that, whatever it is. I'll, but we're almost three hours into it. We're going to be running out of time. And I'm very much interested in hearing about the issues that give rise to his motion. Uh, the process after that, I very clearly understand that they have a disagreement. But we need to get down to the merits of of the motion when he filed that motion, would it was a material and substantial change of circumstances existing such that the court should modify the decree? Thank you, Your Honor. Amber interfered with your custody rights in in in, in which brought you to want to remediate the matter. Is that right? Correct. How did she interfere between two thousand and five or two thousand and seven? in 2011 when you filed your motion, besides the 2009 filing of the um, sexual abuse charge. Other than that? There's just no co-parenting at all. It's either her way or the highway. Explain that, please, as nicely as you can. Um, Give me examples, please. Anytime there was an opportunity for her and I to go to a basketball game or a baseball game, there's only certain games are on certain dates. And if you try to, you know, say, do you mind if we do this? It's on this date. Give proper notice. Even if you said it a month in advance, he's busy, he's got, we have plans, I'm sorry. Well, you, you were given visitation each Monday from 8 o'clock in the morning until 7. And, and Correct. And then you had a, a sort of a weekend schedule. Did she deny you those times? No. So she gave you what you were entitled to get under the agreement? Yes. Did not interfere with that? When he, okay. when he turned five years old, would she agree to remediate? Kind of just got pre brushed under the mat. Did it get brushed under the mat because these new allegations were filed? I object. Why? Where is this proof? Well, I, 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 I'm getting the fact that the, the age factor, Ms. Fine, I, I, I've resolved. I, I think the timeshare age factor is a consideration I understand that a child this old under this earlier plan probably would you would need expanded visitation all things being equal that would be almost a gimme I'm more concerned about the alienation because the alienation goes if all your client is looking for is a change in a little bit of time that'd be one thing if, if we're talking about a change in custody which apparently he is in, in the he's asking for physical custody then the allegations or the alienation allegation then becomes the thing, and that's the. And he made very specific uh, complaints, and I'm just. I'm
I'm trying to distinguish that. I, I, I will, con I, Ms. Fine, I think there's no reasonable dispute that the child has gotten older, older and under normal circumstances there would be an increase in the amount of days. I agree with that, Judge. And but but, I, but what I'm really trying to get, you, get everybody to focus on is these underlying very big substantial allegations of, of the alienation, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in having that defined. I mean, I know about the sexual abuse allegation, the one sexual abuse allegation, and, and I don't know if the mother made that, but I mean, you, you, but still, there's some other allegations there. I'll leave it up to you. Proceed. It's my black and white thinking. It arises from coming from a very structured environment, Ms. Fine. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, you're very right, Judge. When I came in this morning, I knew that Judge Tooten knew certain things, so I need to let you know what he knows without taking up your life. So I'm going to do it really quickly. In the parenting agreement that you executed, neither one of you could be away from the other for more than three days. Correct. Were you ever allowed to take your son by yourself for three days, ever? Never. Even though it says you're allowed to take him, correct? Correct. So, did Amber ever take the child for more than three days? Yes. Did you ever say anything to her? No. Why? I don't need confrontation. I, don't, I felt that if she sees that I'm willing to cooperate, maybe one day she'd understand that I'm not out to get her and we're here to work together. Maybe I could get it in return. And did it ever happen that no. she would work with you? Um, did you have a right of first refusal, you and Amber, is that Never. correct? I should have gotten it. And I'm sorry, you do not have it? It's in our parenting plan that I'm supposed to get it, but I was never given the opportunity. Were there at least how many, you, you knew of at least how many occasions when Amber had gone out of town without, with, with, without Hayden and failing to tell you about it? I know of two occasions. Can you tell me when? Uh, it was when she was got married without anybody's knowledge. She went to Hawaii on a honeymoon, and I was not given the first right of refusal. And when she was rehired with public services, she went to Florida for a 90-day training session, and I was not given first right of refusal. Um, how about her? The, and also, of course, these um, sexual abuse claims. There are two of them. Is that correct? Correct. As a result of both of those, are you? Are you? Um, do you believe that? That's appropriate when, well, I'm, I'm trying to say this. On what grounds did she make these allegations? I don't know. And I'd like to know. <laughs> the first one, the first one, can you tell me what happened? Um, I got picked Hayden up, and all I know is I had a phone call, and my mother and I and Hayden went to the Henderson Police Department. Did they examine him? Uh, I was told that by Amber that she took him to a UMC hospital, and that the doctor there, and these were her words, said that he had evidence of being assaulted. I then, once I picked him up the next day, I then took him to our family, Hayden's pediatrician, and they said there's absolutely no signs of anything. Did that pediatrician make a report? Yes, he did. And then what happened as a result? Then the whole thing got dismissed. Did Hayden have hemorrhoids? I've never seen it. Does Hayden have constipation? He never when he's with Ben with me. When he was with his mom, did she ever ask you to use a suppository? She asked me to use it, but I didn't feel comfortable doing it. So what did you do instead? I just didn't do it. Give it to him. <laughs> he said, here, take him to the doctor. I feel that that's what a doctor should do. Um, <clears throat> so tell me about, did you have, between 2009 when that sexual allegation went by the by and June of 2011, did you believe that you had a good relationship with your son? Yeah. They had a great relationship. And you acknowledged, you heard Nick Ponzo say that he, um, he has a history of lying. Correct. And do you know where that comes from? I don't know. I can't, I couldn't put a finger on it and say 100%. Are you and your brother and sister-in-law and Mr. Ponzo working on that with him? Correct, yes. Now his grades, what, oh, I can't even go back there. What, um, was your son removed from his elementary, when he was, what school did you and Amber agree to put your son in when he was a little boy? Back before this, we agreed he would go to John C. Vanderburg. And did he go to John C. Vanderburg? Yes, he did. And was he removed from John C. Vanderburg? I found out after. Uh, yes, yes. Or no? Was that with or without your permission? Without. Um, how long after he was removed from John Vanderburg did you find out? Two months, three months. And um, was that during the no contact? Uh, yes. 
Um, do you know if she told anyone? Uh, Detective Smartwood, Amber Smartwood from Henderson PD. When did, well, how do you know that? Because she called me and told me. Oh, okay. So was that 90 days later? Is that when you found out? Uh, approximately. Okay. Um, do you know how he was doing in school at Vanderbilt? I know he wasn't doing well due to, it's because uh, not the second year, or first grade, I'm sorry, but in kindergarten, Mrs. Lively, his teacher, told me he had a very big problem paying attention. You didn't tell me what his grades were. I know they weren't great. Okay, so. exhibit. Do you have the exhibit book in front of you still? No. Okay. So you do you know how he's doing in school now? Not that great, but improving. Um, when you filed this action in November of 2011, it was in between the, he, I'm trying to explain, tell you that, tell the judge that he was removed from school and that's one of the reasons we filed this motion. Is that not true? Correct. And because that's included in your motion. Yes. Were you disturbed by the fact that you didn't know where he was going to school? Yes. Did you ever lose joint legal custody? Tell me what other roadblocks um, Amber put up that caused you to file this motion. Was it her failure to work with Mr. Ponzo? As far as I just felt there was no co-parenting, I felt that, you know, to raise a child we need to work together. Our set our differences aside whether we like each other or not, do what's best for our son. Talk to me about a few issues on our I, want to hear about. Number one, apparently you have a gambling issue. Is I did. You did? Before my son was born. I did a little bit after, but it did saw it now. Since the child, well, do you gamble at all? Have you gambled at all since your son's been born? Uh, in the seven years, very, very little. How bad was the problem before? you? I mean, you're the one that brought it up in some pleading. How bad was it before? It's as bad as it can get. I mean... What it, did you do to resolve that? I went to see counseling, and I saw uh, my mother's reaction. You saw what? My mother's reaction. What was her reaction? I'm sorry. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Who did you go to counseling with? Stephen Callis. When did that end? Uh, when I couldn't afford to pay Nick Ponzo and Stephen Callis. Well, Mr. Ponzo was very recently. Have you been going to Mr. Callis up until very recently? Yeah, we went up to probably a couple months ago. But it turned in from the gambling uh, therapy more into what's going on here today. Uh, Tell me about the, the cocaine use. Apparently you have or do use cocaine? No, it was your recreational and uh, Stephen Cowell. It was recreational. The cocaine use. It was recreational. Which cocaine use ever recreational? Uh, what does that mean to you? Oh, it was like once in a blue moon at a party or, you know, go somewhere. It was never a dependent. Have you ever been arrested as a result of your cocaine use? Or? No, sir. You know it's a felony in the state of sir. Nevada? So you're willing to commit a felony to, at a party? No, sir. That's why I no longer do it. Huh? I no longer do it. What do you mean you no longer do it? When did you quit? When was the last time you used? When the last time I used was 30 days prior to June 11th. Of this year? Well, last year. Last year. So about May 11th of 2011? Late April, early May. Why did you decide to quit? No way to live. I'm a father, and just time to wake up. Well, you were a father a long time before that. But it wasn't like an everyday. It was once a blue moon. Not that that makes it right. What's a blue moon mean? Once every six months, maybe, or once in... Okay. What disabilities was your cocaine use causing you? What disabilities? Yeah. I don't understand. Did you feel that your use of drugs somehow impaired you at all? No. Do you see any problem with your use of drugs? I had 
I you just, said you quit because I, you were a father. I, I just, I just, you it's just not before. right. I just got to the point where, listen, you're getting too old for this crap. It's time to stop. Do you use any other drugs? Uh, just allergy medicine. I'm talking about illicit drugs. Oh, no, illegal drugs, no. Marijuana? No, never. Never liked it. All right, Miss Fine. <laughs> Did um, Miss Johnson take your son to sexual abuse counseling? Yes. Do you know who she took him to? I was given the name through court. It was Dr. Javi Mandel, and then after that was Dr. Melissa Kladner. And did either one of those counselors ever call you? Not once. Did Ms. Johnson ever ask your permission or ask, your, ask for your participation in either of those counselors? No, she did not. So to this day, have you ever talked to Melissa Kladner? No. Have you ever talked to Javi Mandel? No. Did you, um, and they never made any effort to call you? Absolutely not. Did there come a time during these proceedings, prior to your filing this motion, where you, even though you weren't allowed to see your son, and even though there was a no contact order, were kept in the loop with respect to knowing where he was and that he was safe and he was okay? No. Uh, but you could call the school and you could make sure that he was in school? Correct. And did you, in fact, call the school and find out that he wasn't there? Correct. Did you then call the cap attorney and find out if she knew where Hayden was? I, uh... Yes or no? Or do you know if a call was made to the cap attorney? I believe a call was made. I and object. There was an order that stated clearly that no one or anyone on his behalf could contact anyone regarding Hayden Johnson. I didn't period on 7 7 issued by the court. And that's the only document I ever received but was asked to comply with. Ms. Fa the issue was is that if a child's removed and the cap attorney and the the court system can't find the child. They knew. Well, they received the Just a minute. Though. Let Ms. Fine finish. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with, Ms. Fine, I, to, just to be real honest with you, as I'm, I'm looking at the substantive allegations, uh, you've convinced me so far these two at least don't get along. Uh, and and I'm, I'm really looking at... I mean, this case comes down to the same issues I talked about before, doesn't it? And those are pretty big issues, Not, and they don't turn on whether or not she took the child out of school a little bit early and what have you. I mean, it, it, She changed schools, Judge. That's what she did. She I changed see. schools. Well, she didn't tell me. She changed schools, and, yeah, it, but you're kind of getting it by third hand. I mean, it's, it's a very I'll easy to question to, to ask her. Uh, Let me ask this, sir. Just, I, I want to make sure I have a clearer answer. Have you ever sexually been sexually inappropriate with your son? No. Okay. All right, Miss Fine. I'm just looking for his affidavit, Judge. I'll pass the witness at this point. All right, ma'am, you may ask questions. Chris, you just responded that um, you have never been sexually inappropriate with your son. What is your definition of sexually inappropriate? I've never done anything sexual around or seen, talked about. Nothing sexual of any content has been ever around my son whatsoever. Did you not deny in court when my father gave testimony on 312? that your son had in fact seen an animated blowjob on your phone in Sweet Tomatoes? My uh, son has never seen the or, video. And naked pictures? Never seen naked pictures. That you should have been more careful? Nope. You did not state that? Nope. The answer is either yes or no. no. And don't And take the sharpness out of your voice. Um, I am not privy to the reports, but I was able to read through Paglini who received um, it's not in evidence. That's correct, ma'am. It's not in the evidence. You can ask him a question. Okay. Did you report to Mr. Callis that you had used cocaine in June of 2011 and also as early as December 2011? No. I never used 2011. Um, in December 2011, no. 
I admitted to using it a month prior to June of 2011, not after that. Did you also um, state to Mr. Callis that um, you are the biggest player at the Wynn and the Red Rock and the Green Valley Ranch? That was at Green Valley prior to my son being born. Do you know, since you're familiar, when the Red Rock and uh, when we're open? I never said I was the biggest player yet? at those. I never said I was the biggest players at those properties. Okay. When you moved to Mountains at Edge, did I know where you were at with my son or where to find you? Yes, you did. How did you communicate that knowledge to me? By phone. How did our parenting plan say to communicate that? Uh, as long as there was communication. You was given within, you requested it be within 24 hours. Did you request for me to attend um, holiday celebrations, i.e. Thanksgiving and Christmas with you 75% of the time? Did I ask you to be a part of it? No, you said that you'd like to be a part of it. You did not want to be excluded. So I said, okay, fine. You said that I reported the sexual abuse, but are you aware, can you tell me who actually contacted CPS with the first case? I was told by a lady named Sholay that it was you. Did you and your attorneys um, have the privilege of having the discovery documents? I'm sure they got it. Uh, that was, Christina Wildeveld was my attorney at the time. Um, you state that it was four weeks after Hayden was withdrawn from school um, that you learned of it and you learned of it by contacting the school, but did you have the authorization? I didn't contact him myself. It was my attorney, Christina Wildeveld, who told me. And then, On your behalf? Yes. Against the no contact? Again, it wasn't me. Um, did you send the cops? to my house two times after already being informed that he was doing homeschool? No, I did not. Was I um, ever flexible with you regarding scheduling? No. Would you consider my accommodating um, you working in another, you know, county, Reno, um, and having a different schedule with your son being accommodating? No, I flew out on the second my time was when I dropped him off. I then went to the airport, jumped on a plane. I then flew home so that I could be there Friday morning to pick him up. So there was no, I still accommodated my original schedule that I was given. Did you invite Hayden and I out to Reno to come visit you while you were working there? Yeah, that's the way I could get Hayden there. Always has been. Did we take family pictures together? Yeah, you always took pictures. Did you report um, to Peg Laney that you have only spent one holiday with me and that was when I was pregnant with our child? I, he asked me that if I ever... Uh, he asked me in Holly. He asked me if you can hear it now. No, it's what did he report to Paglini? It's what did he report to Paglini? What did you report to Paglini? I reported that you came to our family homes for holidays, but, you know, that you insisted on coming. Were you aware um, at the celebration of Nicholas's birthday that? You were not to be there I'm because sorry, it was. I don't understand. Can you do that again? Nicholas's first birthday or second birthday this Nicholas. year. I don't know. Al why. Allison. Let, let her ask a question. Go ahead. His nephew Nicholas. Did you go over there for the birthday party, at knowing that you were not supposed to be there per the court order on three twelve? I was there for the on birthday. on two twenty three. I was there for the birthday party. Were you supposed to? I was invited to see my nephew, so I attended. 
were you aware that I had that was the first week and I had de been denied my court ordered visitation because there wasn't a physical order yet I wasn't aware I turn. any other questions How um, did I refuse to revisit the parenting plan and go through mediation? When I asked you about it, you changed subjects. How did you ask me about it? It's, he's five years old. It's time we get together and talk about our future. Wasn't it discussed in the parenting plan that that would be done in writing? Do I need to? I don't remember the conversation ever. Well, again, I try to co-parent and communicate with you. Um, did you admit to CPS in 2009 that you were using cocaine as well? I admitted to it. Would, did our relationship take a turn when I, as um, the assistant accountant at your parents, CPA office take a turn when I reported money stolen in, no. ex in excess of 50000 When you reported your what? Money missing from the family business in excess of 50000 And was this before Hayden's birth? This is during the pregnancy. Yeah, well, that's, that's ancient history that has no relevance to the current process, so that's, that's, not, a, a, that's not relevant. Only from the time of the decree or time of the order on July twelfth, two thousand and seven, through probably today of sorts. Have I ever sued you for full custody? Uh, not until I read this present this present time. You're looking for to seek it now. Have I ever contested child support, knowing that you? defaulted on your judgment and have not paid what you've been court ordered I've always Objection paid convoluted and have I ever out? come after you to change child support yes you went to the courts without speaking to me first and I was served in front of my family in front of my employees by a it said after 2007 so let's you're continue. asking about child support and this have I gone problem? to have it revised as well I let's, have a let's right. not it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's if you have a right to collect child support, you have a right to go after him for it. Did you stop paying child support this year on your own terms? Nope. The answer is yes or no. No. I'm, I'm done. Anything else, Miss Fine? Yes, Judge. Just a couple of things. Um, did you ask when you were when you had to go to Reno? Did you ask Amber if you could modify the schedule a little? I asked if there would, yes. What did you say? No. Um, did, let's see, uh, did we take any pictures? So when she went to Auburn, California with you, was it because it was a good time for everyone, or did she, she wouldn't let you go unless she came as well? I wasn't allowed to take my son unless she accompanied, accompanied us to Auburn. And was that like most of the other events that you went to? Correct. Um, did you ever have your son wake up with you on a Christmas morning? No. Did you ever have your son wake up with you on an Easter morning? No. Did you ever have your son wake up with you on any holiday morning? Not even a, well, maybe one birthday, but no. Um, I'm going to ask you to look at Exhibit 1 of your motion, which is that lovely parenting agreement uh, that the two of you entered into on July 12th, 2007. And I'm going to ask you to look at page two, and I'm going to ask you to look at paragraph E of that, where it says, and what does it say? Each parent shall keep the other parent fully and promptly informed of his or her current physical resident address, mailing address, home and cellular phone numbers, and electronic mail address, and shall notify and provide the other parent in advance or within 24 hours of any changes of either address and or telephone. Does it say it has to be done in writing? No, it does not. Thank you. Says it later in there. Okay, ma'am, please avoid the comment. You'll be given an opportunity to testify if you desire. Anything else, Miss Fine? No, Judge. Okay, thank you. You may step down. Thank you. Uh, you going to rest, Miss Fine? After the uh, video, after the, the. Okay, we'll we'll address that right after lunch. Um,
All right. Uh, we'll be in recess until 1.15, no later than, uh, but we'll be in recess until then. Amy? You may leave your stuff here. I'm going to lock up the uh, courtroom. You guys want to go? Thank you. Stuff here and I'll lock it up, and then uh, I'll come down five minutes early to get the courtroom open. And get I'm going right in there. there. Okay, I'm gonna work there. Then, what I'm gonna do is close Can you these take two uh, Great. middle doors. I just, since I'm going next, look at a couple of my. You have to leave the courtroom, take yes. it with you. Yes. Yep. Because yes. I need to go eat lunch, so I'm good to go too. Mm -hmm. This is the court clerk's book. Okay. And she's going to want that, even though I can't get anything in, because... Can you grab my uh, computer as well, somebody? And some of the waters and my purse, so that I can work, and... How long is it? Make sure you have what you need, because I'm going to lock the little doors. Yeah, see if she needs her purse. Uh, Esther wants her purse. Well, we're going to take it yeah. something. We could yeah. have avoided all of this. <laughs> they're not as organized as your friend. What? They're not as organized. No, they're organized. I'm the one that's clearly not today. <laughs> Which bag? This? I'm happy to help you, too. Um, this is my food. What can I take? This? Waste of time. And the la that last bag on the floor is too little to have to carry all that. I know. And that purse alone is going to give her a backache. Are you going to go in here?